Carl Sagan once said that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. You know what? We agree, though not in a way that an atheist might think, if it could be said that an atheist thinks. I think this counts as poisoning the well, since you're generalizing your claim to all atheists. But I don't mind too much, so go ahead and move on. Hello everyone, your friendly neighborhood atheist here. The music you just heard was by a band called Windy City Slaughter off their first EP, Alpha. They play this really interesting combination of progressive metal and deathcore styles, so if you like what you hear, I highly recommend you check them out. Their bandcamp page is linked below. Today I'm responding to a video called Proof That God Exists from a channel called WWUTT, which stands for When We Understand the Text. They use this tagline in their videos, what? which I think is just hilarious. So anyway, on to the video. The burden of proof is more on an atheist to show there is no creator than it is on the Christian to prove that there is. I'm stopping here to briefly explain the burden of proof and why this claim is fundamentally wrong. So for an existential claim, we have some thing exists. The claim is fundamentally the same whether the thing is God, an orbiting teapot, or a rock. In order to say it exists, it must have a physical, demonstrable counterpart in the material world. If the claim is that it exists outside the material world, then in order to demonstrate the truth of its existence, it must first be demonstrated that something can be said to exist outside the material world. This can be as simple as changing the definition of existence. For example, it has been argued by some that concepts like one or the logical absolutes exist outside the physical world. I disagree, but I won't go into detail here. All that needs to be said is that in order to say such thing, you must first use a different definition of the word exists. Not a problem if you provide such a definition. This video does not, so I naturally assume the everyday definition of the claim, in which case the burden of proof is on the person who makes the existential claim, such as Bigfoot exists, or the flying spaghetti monster exists, or God exists. Why? Because all human beings inherently understand design. True, and I have actually linked a study below that supports that claim. Uh, but just because everyone thinks something is true does not mean that it is. Uh, that would be an argument ad populum fallacy. This is referred to as empirical adequacy. Pick any object and you inherently know it was created. There are a bunch of things wrong here. First, that's not the proper definition of empirical adequacy. Empirical adequacy is when a hypothesis is used to predict empirical outcomes, and it is demonstrated to be accurate with phenomenological regularity. I have absolutely no idea where you got your definition. Secondly, just because it is natural to think something does not mean that it is true. This is an argument ad naturum fallacy. Finally, I don't know that just anything was designed. I evaluate whether it was designed, and if it appears to be natural, then I assume it was not designed. See my first lemma video. But no atheist will ever be able to refer to anything coming into existence without cause or creator. You just shifted the goalposts. Your original claim was that we inherently know that everything was created, which is wrong since A, I don't, and B, see my first lemma video. Now you've snuck in cause. Does every thing or process have a cause? Well, not necessarily. I have, once again, linked Lawrence Krauss's lecture below. There are a number of phenomena that happen at the quantum scale which do not have direct causes. An easy example is radioactive decay, but there are others, and Krauss argues that these may just be responsible for the creation of the universe. Even if he were to cook up some example of random process- Such as radioactive decay? Are you going to mention that? It seems so obvious I was surprised you didn't. Well, how about it? He runs into what is called the implied creator paradox, because he had to create his example of non-creation. Well, I guess I'm going to be disappointed. Okay, firstly, I have no idea what you're actually referring to with your implied creator paradox. The only other example I can find of this is some blog post that references a book that hasn't yet been published, so if anyone could help me out with this, that'd be great. Secondly, the paradox as stated is not applicable. Yes, I created my example of radioactive decay. So what? The example was created. The phenomenon to which it refers was not. 
The statement made earlier about how atheists don't think, we aren't trying to be derogatory, we're simply following their logic. If we're nothing but the result of accidental processes, then human beings are just walking sacks of chemicals. And chemicals cannot reason, they only react. Reason, in the codified sense of logic, is necessarily a human construct. Thought and reason are labels we give to processes in our brains. Chemical reactions, as you put it. These processes reflect accurately with our observations of the external world, and therefore merit being labeled true. But reason, thought, and truth are all subjective with respect to our minds and our observations of the external world. That's a pretty good description of some atheists. Ha ha. Move on. Romans 1, 19 through 21, for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Two things. First, how on earth can invisible things be clearly seen? Second, James Kirk said, What does God need with a starship? Why is this particular verse important? You haven't demonstrated its truth. What he said, There's no reason to have to prove God's existence because everyone inherently knows. Well, I don't. And since God's existence is an existential claim, the burden of proof is on the claimant, and it has not been fulfilled. Simply stating that everyone knows it does nothing to demonstrate its truth, even if that statement were true which it's not, because I do not know that God exists. God is real, and his word is true. Both of those are claims which must be demonstrated to be true. All of the evidence is already there when we understand the text. The text, and the Bible, is no more evidence for God's existence than the existence of this clip is for the existence of Confuse the Cat Limited. Stay! Ready for confusing! Right, men? Confuse the cat! <laughs> it's all in the day's work for Confuse a Cat. And that's it. Once again, the actual video is quite short, but boy does it cover a lot of ground. And thanks for bearing with me through all of that. This has been your friendly neighborhood atheist, and until next time, best wishes!